Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Crown Records Management Digital Transformation Series. Today's guest is Philippe Chone, the CIO's right-hand man who has independently delivered global business transformation programs for the likes of Deutsche Bank, Willis Towers Watson, and most recently worked as Global Program Director at HSBC, leading an innovation portfolio. Philippe, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kevin. It's a pleasure to be here. Excellent. Thanks so much for coming on. So just to start off, Philippe, you've got considerable experience in delivering large and complex digital transformation programs, especially within financial services. You've worked with Visa and some of those before mentioned brands. What key lessons have you learned as an advisor? The first, uh, obviously a large number of lessons as, as you go through this, but there's a, there's a number of common themes going through uh, each of those big transformation. Change is here and it's here to stay. So uh, there's never a right moment to start. Uh, now is the perfect time rather than expecting we should have done it before. Uh, the, the, the second message is change is a journey rather than a, a destination. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a process, it's not, oh, I'm going to be doing this for five minutes and then I'm done. It's so, because it's a journey, you need to start, you need to start now, you need to start more. And as every journey, you need to know the direction. What, are the, what, are, what is the big vision? What are you trying to achieve? And then you need to do, to take the team with you. It's more digital transformation or big transformation are more and about leadership than technology. And I know everybody these days tends to think, technology, yeah, I'm going to be doing AI, I'm going to be doing machine learning, I'm moving to the cloud. It's, you know, that might be the solution, that might be part of the solution, but this is, you know, this is not the first reason why you start. These are components, these are tools, and unless you've got the big why and you've got the team behind you, these kind of things are going to be, you know, if you just go for a cloud strategy, it's like you're going to end up with a cloud, but your business is still going to be the same as before, your competitors are still going to be innovating you. Yeah, really, really interesting. Start with why, as, uh, as, as one guru uh, talks about, and so, you know, rather than getting tactical, you know, where's our AI strategy or our machine learning strategy? You know, some, in, in some cases, um, you, don't, you don't necessarily need one because that, that, that's not the solution to, to the business problem. Well, um, Philippe, let's, let's talk specifically about the financial services sector. Um, uh, you know, very well regulated sector. Crown do a lot of work with uh, global financial services and banking organisations. I'm just wondering, based on your significant experience, how well based or positioned is that sector for this type of digital business transformation? Uh, in terms of, there's two parts of it. Uh, the, the transformation is, is mandatory. Uh, the, the, the environment is changing, the regulatory the environment is changing constantly. The customers are being trained by Amazon and Amazon Prime to expect results straight away with you know, deep inside, you know, rich customer uh, service, low touch, uh, mobile first. So that's, that's part of the, the aspect. Now, if you look at yourself as a large incumbent, then how ready are you for this? Because you are being out-innovated on the, you know, in a large number of directions by fintech, neobanks, and at that point, you have to change. So you've got a platform, the customer needs you know, new services, want to change. The environment pressure means you have to, you know, your business costs are probably going to be increasing, your business is changing because of the regulation, and you are uh, feeling a lot of existing competition, mm. plus new competitors. So price to price, you have to change, you have to do something. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, the, the reason for the change of platform. Mm. Doing the change is, is obviously you know, a large organization uh, with, a, a, you know, and I may be overgeneralized, but a lot of silos. This is what you need to do in these kind of digital transformation or big transformation or change, mm. even innovation. This is the value comes when you break those silos, when you, you know, each department collaborate together. And actually, the competition should be outside the door of the organization rather than inside the doors. <laughs> Simple cultural change, but hard to do. Uh, legacy and experience and culture have been, you know, in these large organizations, has been there for a long time. So mm -hmm. this is where there's another aspect of 
how to bring this change in, in, a, in a rapid but also safe fashion. Mm. And same again, I believe the, the analogy of the journey mm. is, you, yes, strategy is really important, but I wouldn't over strategize on this. It needs to be done, it needs to be started. Mm. So, and, and I like to use a quote from Patton, where it says, um, um, a good plan executed aggressively today is better than a perfect plan next week. Mm -hmm. And this is, this, I think the message is here, it's really start doing something. Philippe, thanks so much for uh, that fascinating insight. So you describe yourself as the CIO and COO's right-hand man. I'm really interested to know what keeps those profiles up at night. So there's a, a number, a number of uh, a number of things. Uh, the first one is, you know, are we going to be in the news tomorrow for the wrong reason? So security and these days around data security is is a given. Uh, and, and what's needed there is making sure that you know, you've got the right control in place, the right processes in place, the right people in place to solve this. The sec on the second, you know, and, and this is prevention, obviously. Uh, on the second aspect is the bigger, uh, less urgent, but probably a lot more important challenges is how do you make sure you innovate, you don't get you know, taken uh, suddenly by an Amazon or a big you know, GAFA coming into your territory taking away your customers. You've also got, you know, and we talked earlier on about the new bank and the fintech kind of jumping at the, you know, at your heel, just kind of taking away some of the margin, the, the customers, your business. So it is in this kind of environment, how do you, you know, how do you innovate while still keeping, you know, I, I use the word, you know, keep out of jail with the regulatory. So you need to meet the regulatory aspect. You need to innovate. And innovation is an interesting thing because this is not a science. It's not like you invest 10 mils and you're getting 10 mils back. It's, uh, you know, some of it is quite a bet in the future. And execution, so the, where do you want to innovate? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you want to innovate on? How do you allocate your budget for innovation? What are the big ideas? So how do you navigate that portfolio of innovation? And then how you execute? That's, mm -hmm. another, you know, that's another challenge. So the strategy, the execution, mm -hmm. the focus is actually quite key. And easy to talk about it, mm -hmm. quite hard when you in, you know, when the heat of the battle, how do you just you know, decide, okay, we're going this way? Yeah, that's really interesting you say that because uh, it brings me on, segues into my next question, the heat of the battle. You know, I've read that you've turned around many an underperforming program uh, in, in your time. I'm just interested and I'm sure listeners uh, will be interested to, to hear as well. What, what are the typical characteristics of a, a transformation program that just isn't working? And you, nobody would see it where, and, and we, we all see in this in our career, where you go into these kind of program where they're green, 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 boom, red. And this is where, you know, it, it's making sure the first thing is what is the real state of, mm. that, of that program, transformation or, or, or whatever. And that is understanding, so this is, you know, the real estate which comes with an understanding of what you're trying to do. What, is a, what, are the, what does good look like? What does bad look like? So going back to the kind of the, the mission, once you understand the mission, then it's a lot easier to say, okay, fine, is that going to be delivering? How far are we? Mm. Without the mission, then you also realize, and I you know that's, that's one of the key things, these, you know, these program fails less about the technology and not lot more about people. It's all around people, people not being, you know, understanding what we're trying to do. There's always change, always bring that uncertainty of what does that mean for me? What am I supposed to go? The future or the future state is not necessarily clear. So how do you make sure that everybody's pulling in one direction? Mm -hmm. So the key things from my point of view is one team, one mission, alignment around this. Then the, the uh, um, Top of that is making sure that there is transparency in terms of the, you know, if something is not working, then that information needs to go flow up, down, sideways. Mm. So this is where the power of the team comes together. Normally, in a failing program, you tend to find actually the bad news is buried way below. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's only when you do the post mortem that you realize that, well, people knew about this, but you didn't talk about this. So it's creating that environment saying, we all succeed as one team. Mm -hmm. We all succeed and we all fail together. Mm -hmm. So if something doesn't work, that's fine. I'm, you know, I'm not going to, you know, chew your head off. Mm -hmm. and it's like let's have a conversation 
what doesn't work, what do you think we should be doing, let's make a decision, let's prioritize and then execute. And then we'll come back again and check where we're progressing. So it's, it's actually pretty simple, mm. but it's pretty hard. It's, uh, it, it <laughs> in practice. Be, in practice, it's pretty hard in terms of force everybody to go in that sense of, uh, you know, deep down going into some, you know, potentially very uncomfortable conversation, mm. but they're there for the right, uh, for, the, for, the, for the good of the program and the organization. Yeah, you know, back to some of some of what you were saying earlier. I, I think you know, start with why. Start with a proper vision to to, to answer a real business problem. And I'm, I'm reminded as well of what you said just there. It, uh, it resonates with Steve Jobs's quote that it's you know technology really is just a vehicle for for de- for delivering the change. Technology is only as good as the people. Yes, yes, that that, that you have. So. Just finally, Philippe, for the relatively quote unquote traditional business who <clears throat> are either at the early stages of their digital journey or in the midst of, of that transformation and wondering, you know, do we need an AI strategy or a machine learning strategy or so on? Uh, they might need, not need that at all, of course. Um, what would be uh, perhaps your playbook for modernization and embracing transformation? The first thing is. Uh you need to innovate, you need to change, you need to, so creating that capabilities within the organization to adapt is key. Uh, And that journey should be started uh, right now if it's not already started. Uh, The competition is there, the competition is there to stay, and I don't think change is going to be slowing down actually. When we look back in the future, we're going to realize that, you know, not only this, we're seeing a lot more change right now, but if you compare to the future, I think we'll see even more. So it's getting used to that kind of, ever-changing environment and keep being the, and I'm, I'm going to be using words that being used so much that they don't mean anything anymore, but the agility of an organization, the ability to react to change, the fitness of an organization, making sure that, you know, that capability to change direction, innovate, and, and when you do this, there's, there's two ways, you know, you do a change and it works, that's great, happy days, you win. Well, then if you do a change and it doesn't work, then you learn. So this, you know, moving away from that, that world where we think you either win or lose, I tend to think as an organization, you either win or you learn. And so you know, this is a kind of a keeping this in mind that you know, this is a learning experiment. This is, you, know, you, you obviously don't want to bet the farm mm-hmm. and lose. So this is where you need to make sure that there's regular small experiment which are being implemented in different regions, in different areas. And this is where as an organization I you know I would never say go big bang. It's actually you innovate in one area and you spread the in block strategy of saying I've done this here, another area I'm trying something different. And as an organization this is where the whole organization, the whole team, the whole people and culture evolve evolve over a period of time. That's the first, the first, obviously, so there is a culture of people. Second one, there's a, you know, you mentioned AI and machine learning. And yeah, these tools might help. And, and actually, they all, it, they help. But there is a big proviso. This is making sure that, you know, this without any, you know, AI, machine learning without data. Mm. Without data you can trust doesn't really help. Mm-hmm. It's actually a hindrance. So you need to make sure you've got your data strategy in place. You've got your uh, data structure, uh, lineage, all understood in an environment where it can be used. There is also around these days around machine learning, everybody talks about it, and there's a lot of experiment being done, but it's like machine learning is a lot more than just having a data scientist in a cupboard writing a great algorithm. It's like, unless it's being deployed, there's very little value of this. Mm-hmm. Also, when you look at this, or so if you're going to be deploying it, treating it as a black box, mm-hmm. then you need to make sure, do I trust the data coming in? Do I trust the outcome coming out? So how do we then you know, validate the whole quality of the output? And same again as before, it's garbage in, garbage out. Uh, machine learning with the wrong data gives you some pretty poor answers very quickly. You need to make sure that that you know understanding of the source uh, and traceability of the source and also the bias of the source are, are there and you understand uh, you you need to make sure you understand where your data is coming from. Excellent, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, 
no, nothing, nothing's changed from that perspective. Philippe Cho, fascinating uh, to speak to you today. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Gabby. Thanks for having me.